thank you, and thank you for the um, amazing introduction. It's probably the best introduction I've got to any conference. A little bit, um, a little bit humbled by hearing all that, but yeah, thank you very much. Um, as I'm uh, really happy to be here. Um, thanks for um, having me here to talk today. It's uh, really nice to get out of Sydney for a day and um, travel about the countryside and. I do have to confess, I did my law degree through correspondence, so those residential schools in winter time, I kind of always had something else on in Sydney. So, yeah, it can't claim I've, um, I know the um, no winters that well. But, look, again, thanks for having me today. I'm going to go through, um, I've been asked to talk about um, uh, a change of topic, I suppose, compared to what you've been talking about this morning, um, but talk about uh, the importance of, of social media in agriculture. and. Uh, look, there's no denying that it is important and there are a lot of ways that it can be used um, to benefit yourselves and benefit your industry um, as a whole and I'm going to go touch on some of that, go through it. Um, it's about a half an hour presentation so um, there's probably a limited amount that I can go through in terms of how to use social media but he's saying that I am going to be around for a lot of the afternoon so if you want to catch up afterwards in terms of um, the mechanics of how to get involved, um, please come and um, catch up with me and I can help you with that. So the outline of today's presentation, why social media is important, um, an overview of some commonly used social media platforms. Some in the room will be quite familiar with a lot of the platforms and some in the room uh, may not, but I'll run through some of those different platforms and give you some examples of where you um, might like to pitch or use those different platforms. Um, some tips for, uh, I'm going to include some tips for successful uh, Twitter and social media use. Twitter seems to be the one social media platform that I get the most questions on and it probably is from from me personally my personal experience is the one that I'm the most active on but it is um, a little bit overwhelming when you first start on Twitter so I do get a lot of questions on that so I've in purposely included a um, section on that in the presentation um, we'll go over some purpose strategy and some tips and sort of no-nos for using social media and then at the end of the presentation I've got some um, interesting stats um, that sort of uh, paint a picture, I suppose, of where social media use is up to um, in agriculture and how many people are starting to get on board with using it. So, in terms of how it's being used, um, it's really, and I said at lunch, um, when I was having a discussion at lunch to someone, um, I see social media as sort of the evolution of communications. You know, once upon a time we just had, you know, uh, written letters or uh, then progressed on to, um, you know, faxes, onto emails, social media is just another layer on top of all of those different forms of communication, another another way to communicate. It's being used to form personal connections, it's being used a lot for storytelling and it's really important to be used for storytelling. Businesses are using it uh, for PR and marketing and it's also being used by rural Australians. Uh, so I'll go through this is the first part of the presentation in terms of why social media import is important um, and I think I hope by the end of the day that well by the end of my presentation that I might have convinced some of you I know I won't have convinced all of you but I may have convinced some of you that we really don't have a choice about whether we do social media the choice is just how well you're going to do it <laughs> Okay, so that might all be very well and good, but the question I always get is, that's fine, it's all very high level stuff, but why is it important for me? Why should I spend time um, investing my time, my personal time on social media? And I recognise the fact that it is a big time impost. And a lot of people in other presentations that I've been to like to point out the fact that social media is free. It's free to have a Facebook page, it's free to have a Twitter account, it's free to have a LinkedIn page. And that is true, but it's it does take um, a reasonable amount of time investment and that's not free, your time's worth more than anything so um, you do need to be getting something out of it to make it worth your while. But what I would say to that is that it allows you to tell your story um, and it's about telling your story not just to the person that you're talking to, just not, not a one-on-one -on -one interaction but a, a one to thousands, a one to tens of thousands, maybe even one to millions interaction. You're, you're just harnessing um, the power to be able to tell your story to a almost infinite number of people all across the world um, with social media in a way that you can't do with any other medium. And it gives you a tool to have voice and influence and again at lunchtime I mentioned that 
um, and I picked this up in my work that I work for in New South Wales Farmers and you'd all very well be aware that every day there are a lot of decisions that are made uh, by governments, by decision making bodies that not only don't take agriculture and producers into account but can actually actively hurt um, your businesses and agriculture and producer and agriculture and producers and the reason why sometimes a lot of those decisions are being made is that agriculture hasn't had a strong enough voice to be able to put their points of view forward so it does allow you um, to influence <coughs> decision makers as well. It broadens your network. For me personally I think that's probably one of the biggest gains I've got out of being involved in social media. I've met people and um, spoken to people all over all over Australia and um, even all over the world, in fact, that I wouldn't have um, got the chance to meet or form a connection with if I hadn't have been involved in, in social media. It allows organisations and you to defend your reputation and your credibility and um, if I can relate sort of my um, perspective on when the uh, live exports uh, ban first happened when we first saw that footage um, and I remember going back into work the next day and this was before really ad chatters <coughs> had um, started to get much larger and before really there was a, a lot of organisations and individuals on social media. There was some there but there wasn't really many and I remember going to work the next day and all I could see through any of my social media streams was ban live exports, ban live exports, ban live exports and it was a, just a total deluge that ministers and people that were making decisions such as Joe Ludwig were receiving an absolute deluge of all he could see um, is ban live exports and as far as he's concerned that's the sentiment that's out there, people want to ban, there's a ban. Um, when it happened, when we saw the footage in Pakistan not too long ago, um, I was really pleased to see that, from my point of view at least, um, the outcry was nothing like what I saw the first time and that was in no small part due to the fact that I think there was a lot more people engaged in the debate that could bring balance to the debate, could bring um, a little bit of um, sensibility to the debate and uh, it, it was there were many, many more people involved in social media that were from an agricultural background and, and for that reason we didn't see as huge an outcry as what we saw the first time. Um, and it presents a real face to the public. Um, and as I've already relayed to you, it's an extremely powerful communication tool. Um, I've already touched on it. I'll just touch on it again because it is very important. Don't overlook the power of real stories. One of the greatest assets of social media is, the, is, the, is that it does enable to you to have, have a voice. And forums such as Ag Chattels, and I'll talk a little bit more about Ag Chattels, um, is a fantastic digital community that if you're new to social media you can engage on and then start to think about what you want your message to be. Um, I do have a, um, a hyperlink up there which I can, that links to a YouTube clip you'll probably be familiar with um, Troy Hadley and some of you may, some of you might. So in terms of his story and his voice, his, his journey I suppose in terms of being a advocate for agriculture began when he posted a YouTube clip, uh, Troy Hedrick's an, an American, uh, Canadian, sorry, I think, um, rancher and found out that there was a $100,000 donation being made to the Humane Society of America um, by Yellowtail Wines, an Australian company. Um, he's very outraged um, at this and made a YouTube clip where he simply stood out in his paddock um, poured a bottle of yellowtail wine into the ground surrounded by his um, cows and expressed his outrage in a sort of 50 second clip. Um, that clip then went viral and uh, the rest of their $300,000, I think it was $300,000 that they had further pledged to the Humane Society of um, America was pulled. Um, so he had influence in that way. So an overview of some commonly used platforms, many of you will be familiar with Facebook. Um, it's a social networking service that lets you connect with your friends, co-workers, others who share similar interests or who have common backgrounds. Um, many, including me, use it as a way to stay in touch after finishing school or uni, um, keep in touch with, with our family, um, if, especially if they're um, located a long way away from you. It's actually different from other 
social networks, it has pretty good and extensive privacy controls in place and you can, you can if you're worried about that, you really can lock it down quite tight on Facebook. Um, and it's got a large development platform, so it's always being um, updated and it has, a, as we know, a huge and quickly growing user base. Um, and it does get regular improvements um, and features. Um, the other thing you can use Facebook for, apart from having your own personal page, is having a page for your business or for your, for your organisation. Um, so this is an, um, a screenshot of um, the page that we have for Ag Chat Odds. Um, it's um, just a nice central place for us to be able to have information about who we are and what we do. We can put pictures up there. Um, we use Facebook quite a lot at New South Wales Farmers as well to share pictures from different events. Um, what we're up to, uh, links, linking back to our website for lots of different information. Um, it's a really uh, quick and easy way for us to be able to engage with, I would say engage with the wider public. So um, it's easy for us to engage with our members because uh, we do that all the time. Um, but if we want to engage with the wider public, um, this is a nice way to do it. Uh, YouTube. So YouTube, a lot of you are familiar with YouTube. Um, I've got a lot of people, I've done, the, I've done a talk, talks on social media all across the country and quite often I'll always get someone that says I'm not interested at all in using YouTube, uh, in using social media I should say, I'm not interested at all in social media, I never use it, don't want to use it, it's going away, um, stop talking about it. And I might ask them, well, have you used YouTube? Oh, yeah, I used it just the other day when I was trying to fix something on my tractor. I just went up and looked on YouTube how to fix it. And they don't realise that YouTube, they don't make a connection. Um, that, is, that is social media. And the stats actually that I'll show you later um, show that YouTube is, is probably the most popular platform amongst farmers. Um, and, and specifically for that reason, it's very good for going and looking up how to, how to fix things, for example. Um, YouTube has a lot of power as well, it gives you the ability to, as I, I, I used that term before, to go viral, so to be able to have your clip uh, or have your information or whatever it is that you're trying to put out in the public domain seen by lots and lots and lots of people and this is a good um, example of that. This um, was a video that was made by some farmers in um, Armour Tree back in 2010. Um, they just had a heap of rain at harvest time. Um, morale was really low in the area. Um, they couldn't harvest, they couldn't go and harvest, so they um, decided that they'd have a bit of fun and make a YouTube clip about, um, it was Baywatch at Armour Tree, and they were all running around um, acting like Pamela Anderson in Baywatch. So it was just a bit of fun. Um, they put it out there as a way to just um, try and lift morale within their community um, and, and, um, and have a bit of fun together. And um, it, that screenshot was probably taken about six months ago and it had had 115,000 views. Um, so you can imagine the power if it's just three farmers from our tree running around impersonating Pamela Anderson can get 115,000 views. Um, well then the power of YouTube is quite, quite <coughs> big. Okay, LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn uh, is the probably is the easiest way to explain LinkedIn is that it's Facebook for professionals. So uh, the main purpose of the site is to allow registered users to have a have a list of contacts um, of people. Say you might meet um, at a conference such as this, um, you might then go and connect with them on LinkedIn, um, and you can invite anyone else to become. You can invite people to. Um, become connections and they'll also invite you to become connections. It works in a similar kind of way to Facebook but it's um, it's a much more professional sort of forum. So I, um, if I can relate my example, I don't carry business cards with people anymore. I'll, I'll get their business cards but then I'll connect with them on LinkedIn um, and keep track of them that way. And that way if I uh, lose their business cards or move jobs or whatever it might be, I've still got um, some way of being able to connect with that person. Um, and, and that's an example there of, of my um, LinkedIn page. And um, it's, again, LinkedIn will also give you the ability to have a company or organisation page. Um, I probably feel like the, the potential with that is a, is a little bit limited at the moment. People tend to go more to Facebook for that sort of information, but it is still there. And uh, you can have like a, a locked down group that only a certain, um, a certain invited people can come into your group, so if that's something that suits you, you can look at LinkedIn. Twitter, 
data. So this is the big one, like I said, that I get asked a lot of questions on. It seems to be the most um, scary one. It's probably also the one with the most potential, I think, for um, being able to get your voice out there and heard and being able to um, form connections with people. Uh, so what is Twitter? Uh, Twitter is a, it's an online, it's an online social networking service. Um, it's to broadcast news and information and it's for communication. Um, for those of you that watch um, Q&A, a lot of people will watch Q&A on Monday nights and you'll see the tweets coming up down the bottom. Um, that is all through uh, using a hashtag and I'll go into a hashtag, but they, they are all using the hashtag Q&A and that's a, a digital community that exists around watching a TV show. Um, it's a micro, it's, quite, it's actually a blogging site, so if you're familiar with blogs, Twitter is actually a blog, but it is actually a micro blog. It's restricted to 140 characters, so you've only got that little bit of space to say what it is that you want to say, which can be really good sometimes, depending on who you're talking to. Um, and you can send a short message to a group of people, so people follow you on Twitter and you can follow people back, so when you sign up for Twitter, if you signed up to Twitter today, for example, you might like to go and follow Hereford's Australia. Hereford's Australia has a Twitter account. Um, they've sent out some information about today, what's happening today. I've been tweeting about what's happening today. Kyle has been tweeting about what's happening today. We're, there's there's, there's um, information that's going out to all of our followers about what's happening today right here in this room. So, and that's, that all goes out publicly. Um, you can send a short message to a specific person um, but that everyone can see that message and then you can also send uh, private messages as well. Ad Chat Oz exists around Twitter. So we are a digital online community. We meet every Tuesday night. Um, so when we talk about Q&As on a Monday night, Ad Chat Oz is on Tuesday night from 8 o'clock and we talk about uh, different, a different topic every week. So last week we talked about extension and advisory services in the bush, which is um, a very good topic to talk about in New South Wales at the moment. Um, and we have six, six questions around a particular topic and everyone comes together at 8 o'clock, um, talks about where they're joining us from, what they're up to, what the weather might be like, where they're joining us from, and then we'll go into a bit of a moderated discussion. And people have really great discussions and I, I always learn something every week from being a part of those discussions. Um, and I love seeing the new connections that are formed between people every week as part of those discussions. Uh, it was founded by myself, um, Tom Whitty, who works for VFF, and Sam Livingston, who's a website developer based in Canberra. And the sole purpose when we when we decided to launch Ag Chattles, um three years ago now, was to raise the profile of Australian agriculture using social media. We could see that social media just wasn't being used. Um, I'd been working in uh, Dubbo and Narrabri and I, I'd moved to the city. It was my first job in the city I, and it was my first job outside of agriculture. Um, back working in agriculture now, which I like. But for a while there, I was, I was out of the loop. So I, I didn't know how to get, I mean, aside from reading the papers or going Online. I didn't really know how to get up-to-date information as to what was happening. I felt like I was losing connections with people that I had in the bush. So I started looking to social media to try and re-establish those connections and there really wasn't anything there. So that's how Ag Chat Oz came about. Like I said, weekly discussions about a range of agricultural and agribusiness topics and we use the hashtag Ag Chat Oz. And I'll go into hashtags. Um, some tips for successful, successful Twitter and social media use. Um, this is probably the one thing, if you don't remember anything else out of my presentation today, when you sign up for Twitter, there is a section where you can set up your profile, what you look like publicly to everyone else on Twitter. When you first sign up, um, so you can put your bio, a little bit about yourself, where you might be based, and you put a photo. Um, that photo can be a picture of your face, it can be a picture of a landscape, your farm, whatever it is that you want to put in there. But if you don't actually update it, this is what you look like to everybody on Twitter. You look like an egg. That is the default picture that everyone gets on Twitter if they don't update their photo. And no one wants to talk to an egg. So if I can just leave you with one tip, it's no eggs. Make sure you update your photo on Twitter. Okay. Uh, 
I'll also talk a little bit about um, third party Twitter platforms. I can appreciate this probably um, may go a, a little bit over people's heads, but I'll, I've got a screenshot on the next on the next page which explains it all a little bit. And like I said, I am here afterwards if you have any questions. So what a third party Twitter platform is, is when you go into twitter.com and you sign up, um, and that's all well and good and you've got your profile, you don't necessarily have time to be doing that every day. Oh, that's right, I have to go and sign into Twitter and check what's happening there. Um, a, th a, a, a piece of software, you can download a piece of software onto your computer um, that you can just have that on in the background um, all the time and it'll give you notifications as to when you need to go in and check things. You might want to be um, keeping an eye on certain topics. Um, the third party Twitter platforms are very good and they act like a conduit between Twitter.com, so the internet site, and your what you're actually seeing on your on your computer screen. Um, it's a simpler and easier way to use Twitter. Um, personally, for those that are already on social media and like to know what I use, I use uh, TweetDeck on my computer and TweetBot on my on my iPad and my iPhone. Um, and there are some other choices there as well. Um, I've already talked about TweetDeck. Uh, you need to go to tweetdeck.com and download a little piece of software and then you um, do a small amount of setting it up and you're ready to go. Once you've set it up, this is what it looks like. So uh, it, gives you, it gives you the ability to be able to, there's a lot of information on Twitter, there's heaps of information. You don't necessarily want to know what Kim Kardashian had for breakfast or whose girlfriend Justin or you just you don't want to know that you really don't want to know that um, so there's a heap of information on there you need some way of being able to filter it out so TweetDeck gives you the ability to be able to filter that information get what you need and get going um, you don't want to spend hours of time trawling through Twitter trying to get the information that you need you need some quick way of being able to get it um, you can set up columns so for instance I've got any ad chat oz. So these are um, tweets that contain the hashtag ad chat oz. Ad chat oz is used all through the week for people to tag information that's happening in agriculture. So I'm always watching that. Um, I've got a column up about what's happening with Riddick. Um, for this screenshot, I've got a couple of columns up about, mm, I want to know what's happening with Syngenta. So I'm, I'm keeping an eye on Syngenta. So it's a lot to take in. Um, but it's very, very easy to use and it's a time saver because if anybody sends you a message on Twitter, you'll get a little box up the top here. It'll just flash up and say, oh, such and such has sent you a message. Like my phone is going off here because Carla is sending tweets about my presentation while I'm doing it. <laughs> hashtags. Hashtags, easiest way to describe hashtags is a content filter. So you can use them to your advantage, like I said, to filter out all the rubbish that's on Twitter, because there is a lot of rubbish and guff on Twitter, but there's a lot of good information as well. So the hashtags is a really, really important way to filter out all that rubbish. Um, so Ag Chat Oz is a perfect hashtag for this audience. Uh, when you sign, if and when you sign up to Twitter, I know you're all going to after this presentation, uh, the first thing you might go and look at is the hashtag ad chat was. That way you can start to look at who's on Twitter, who you might like to follow. Well, sorry, the first people you're going to follow are Hereford's Australia. And then after that, you can go and follow <laughs> whoever you like. Um, use them to your advantage. Uh, you're going back to the Q&A example. When you see the tweets down the bottom of the screen during Q&A, they all contain the hashtag Q&A. And that's how they're picked up and put on the screen. Um, Ozpol, um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on about Australian politics. Um, you can create your own hashtag for an event, um, which there is a hashtag for today's <coughs> event um, that was created earlier today called Hereford's AUST. Um, and you can also add them, you can also use hashtags to add context. It took me a while to get this idea of hashtags adding context, um, so I probably would suggest not trying it until you really feel comfortable in it. Um, but by all means, you can tweet that if you like, so listening to the Guru Janika Lees talk about uh, social media and then hashtag it, what a legend, I'd be quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> the tip for hashtags is to not make them too long. If you're creating a hashtag for an event, for example, because you want to build up a bit of social media buzz around an event, don't make them too long um, because it all takes uh, takes up space in that 140 character limit that I was talking about before. You remember that 140 character limit that I spoke about? Your hashtag has got to fit in that 140 character limit, so don't make them too long is probably the best tip. Uh, Twitter statistics, you can start to drill down into um, the, how, what, are, what are you getting out of Twitter? Are you getting more followers? Um, are you getting people retweeting what you're saying? You can, there are many platforms out there, once you get into it and you get interested and you want to have a look at it. Um, this will be in the presentations that will go around afterwards, so it's a handy reference to just look back on if you do get to that point. Um, some of the platforms um, are listed there. Um, tweet stats, Twitter counter, trend, um, there's a lot. Um, and there's some paying platforms as well that can start to tell you how much benefit you might be getting out of spending a lot of time in talking about your business on social media, for example. <coughs> Uh, tips for using Twitter and actually social media as well for marketing um, and Carla and I had this talk earlier about um, number one tip aside from the eggs actually I should make that number two tip number one tip is the eggs um, number two tip is um, to use it to engage it's a two-way conversation um, I see a lot of organizations that use uh, and a lot of individuals that use Twitter for example to just they might just send out their media releases for example or they'll just talk about um, what they're doing all the time. So, you know, they're just talking about themselves all the time. They're not actually engaging with their audience. Um, they're not um, having a two-way conversation. It's not a soapbox, it's about engaging. So uh, that is a very big tip for using Twitter. And part of engaging means sharing valuable and useful content in a personal way, cultivating relationships. Um, that they are these are real relationships. I mean, people um, can make fun of the fact that it is only on the internet and it's you know it's only a digital community. But for a lot of people that participate in ad channels, it might be their they might be so isolated that it might be their only opportunity to catch up with other like-minded people in that week. It is a digital community, and those those relationships are tangible. Um, don't talk about yourself and your brand all the time. So it's okay to talk about yourself, but it's not all the time. Um, and embrace the fact that you're part of that online community. And then, like I said, then you can start to measure, measure and monitor your return on investment. Are you feeling like you're getting anything out of it? Is it taking up too much time for what you're getting out of it? Um, always keep an eye on that. Strategy. Um, Look, I, I don't think you necessarily need to have a written strategy down. I certainly don't in terms of how I use social media, but uh, there are a few things that I like to keep sort of in the back of my mind. Um, and depending on whether you're using it for a personal, a personal um, account or if you're using it for a business or an organisation account. So monitoring is really important and it's funny we've got monitoring up there because I have a lot of... Um, uh, contacts in Parliament and some of them politicians that tell me that that's pretty well all they use Twitter for is for monitoring. They may not participate actively in different forms of social media because it is hard for them and everything that they say gets very scrutinised um, and they might not necessarily want to dip their toe in that particular conversation but they do They do monitor, what they certainly do monitor what's being said. Um, the amount of times I've been emailed on a Wednesday morning, so the day after the Ag Channel's chat the night before, um, the amount of times I've been emailed the next morning by someone's advisor or chief of staff asking for a transcript of what happened the night before, um, it's quite regular that I get asked for those. So um, even though you may not see those decision makers actively participating, they are monitoring and they are looking at what's being said, which is good to know, I think. Um, it might be useful to map out a communications calendar um, always use social media to, if you have a business website, to drive traffic back to your business website. Um, policy and guidelines, if you're using it um, and you have employees involved in using it on your behalf, important to have policy and guidelines in place. Training is really important as well. And probably the most important thing I think on this slide is, um, I like this point on implementation. It's 
I went through all those platforms before, but I wouldn't want you to come away thinking that you necessarily now have to go and set up a Facebook account for yourself, a Facebook page for your business, a LinkedIn account for yourself, a LinkedIn account for your business, and a Twitter page for both as well. Um, just do it one at a time, uh, what you think may suit, try it out, and then move on to the next thing. It, I'll, I'll go back to it all the time. It is a big timing plus. If you don't have time to do it, wait until you do, because there's nothing worse than having someone's uh, account set up that's not being monitored and it's not being used properly. So one platform at a time. And then, like I said, you can start to refine what works and what doesn't. Um, you can consider abiding by a personal social media policy. Again, it's not something I have like written down next to my bed. Oh, that's my personal social media policy. I'm not going to talk about that. But I have an idea in my mind as to how I'm going to use social media. So Facebook, for instance, I keep it fairly close down. It's just family and friends. I have pictures of my kids up there. I have stuff about what I'm doing on holidays. Um, I, I don't want my boss to know what I'm doing with my kids. Um, it's, it's about boundaries and I'm sure he doesn't want to know either. Um, so it's, I keep that fairly locked down. Um, LinkedIn, I start to, uh, I, I approach that as just purely professional. So I'll generally only connect with people on LinkedIn that I've met face to face or that I've had some kind of um, uh, connection with. So we may talk through work on email or on the phone, something like that. Um, and Twitter, I approach that um, very professionally because it's my name that's out there. It's my own online reputation. Um, in saying that, it's it's professional, but it's mixed in with a bit of um, personality. You don't want it to, to be completely bland. But in saying that, I very rarely put things up on Twitter about um, my family or, or my kids, for instance. So I, I like to keep that sort of fairly professional if I can. Um, I've already mentioned um, being a custodian of your online, on, online, online reputation and I'm sure there's no problems with, with, um, with people being able to keep on top of that in this room, um, although uh, I do talk to some younger audiences and for instance I spoke to the New South Wales Young Farmers the other day about using social media and advised them to um, maybe go and Google themselves and see what comes up because sometimes some of the pictures and things that come up may not be flattering if you're going for your job, for instance. Um, so uh, it's important to just be aware of what you're putting out there because once it's out there, it's out there forever. Um, and like I say on the slide, if you're in doubt, don't do it because the internet is forever. Be open, transparent and authentic. Um, just it's, it's too hard to keep up some kind of facade on social media. It's just much easier just to be yourself. Um, and don't be rude or abusive. There are, there are, and we've heard in the media, we see in the media all the time, there are what's called trolls out there on social media, but they want you to engage. If you just, there is a block button, you can block people on Twitter, for example. Just use it. Don't engage with people that are just looking um, to be abusive. Have an opinion, but don't use it as a soapbox. So, just to sort of wrap up, um, I thought I'd put for a slide in there on using social media for campaigns. There's a lot of different campaigns, small campaigns, big campaigns, whatever it might be. Um, some tips for that is to know your audience, know who it is that you're trying to get the message out to. So a conference like this, who are you trying to target? Who, who are you? Um, threat, are you throwing the net really wide? Um, is, it, is it just a certain um, demographic of people that you're trying to target? Who is that? And then create the messages that target those specific individuals. Um, engage all the time. I've said it again and again. Don't use social media as a grandstand. It is a two-way conversation. And whilst it's important to be on social media, I certainly think it's very important to be on social media. If you don't have time to do it, wait until you do. Um, and just some stats, and it, it's been really good that these have just come out because I quite often get asked in my presentation um, about, well, really, like how many farmers are on social media? Um, and I've only been able to sort of say what I think up until now and, and, and just give a bit of an anecdotal response. Um, Hartman Communications is just in the process of wrapping up a research project that they did um, looking at exactly this question, how many, what, what's the breakup of people on social media in agriculture? So 
um, they, t they termed it the New Bush Telegraph and it was the first time any kind of market research had been done on how social media was being used in, in agriculture. Um, they found that um, one in six, so 80% farmers and just under half of industry leaders are using social media and I'll point out socially, so they're using it socially at the moment. Um, and over the coming years, that's set to increase um, to a potential of one in three, a third of farmers, and and probably around about the same. That, that, that'll that increase a little bit, but uh, around about the same of half of industry key opinion leaders. Um, social media used by farmers and industry uh, leaders alike for work, so this is in relation <coughs> to work now, um, we're Facebook, so 15% uh, of farmers were using Facebook for work, and 45 percent of uh, um, uh, industry leaders, I should say, were using Facebook for work. And YouTube, like I said, um, it's a lot of 29 percent, nearly one in three um, respondents to this survey anyway, were um, using um, social media, for, uh, using specifically YouTube, I should say, uh, for work. So that's quite interesting. And look, it's a, there's heaps of information in that report. There's, much, much more info than that, but I just thought I'd pull out some of the most interesting ones to maybe give you a bit of a baseline um, of where we're at. Um, and I'll just leave you with a quote because I, I really liked it. I, know I had a different quote on this um, page up until a couple of days ago and I, I liked it when I was um, reading about uh, the Troy Hadrick example that I related to you earlier. And, um, there was a ABC News story on Troy Hadrick's recent visit to Australia and um, Don Hitley sort of summed it up quite well and he just said, as an industry we must grab this medium, get on with it and we have to use it to our advantage and probably more importantly not let others use it to our disadvantage. Thank you.